on. Then there are people who think that it's about violence and that seems to me to be a misunderstanding. There'll be less understanding what's going on but more of like oh, I'm doing this because I think this is how it's meant to be done, not I'm doing this because I actually like doing this and we've all sort of grown together learning how to do this. Because you get people turning up to a show and they'd be like these guys who have no idea about music but you know they see these guys getting off and jumping into one another and they think right okay and they wait there wait for someone to bump into them and then they just turn them around. I was in the mosh pit uh, watching the clams play, Beard of Clams, uh, down at St Lenny's at one stage and there were two people of ethnic persuasion that uh, decided that uh, a couple of friends of mine were killing each other and uh, called them idiots and trying to beat on them with their hands and at least I'm a reasonable size and I did stop that but there's just total bewilderment on their behalf, you know, what's going on, um, you know, it wasn't uh, Greek Festival Day. You know? Yeah, but you know, that, that's their way of sort of saying, yeah, but this guy bumped into me, so, you know, isn't that what you guys are into? They don't know how to, how to act, and when they see people and pure energy going like that, they just think people are brawling and killing each other. That's not what's happening at all. I think there are a lot of people, um, and I think this is the influence of it being mainstreamed a lot, a lot of men go into a mosh pit, you know, just looking to kick heads a lot of the time and think if there's aggressive music playing that that's what it's about. I think with the term moshing nowadays, you know, it's, it's become a little bit more violent than what it was, you know, because it was just a good fun thing originally, but I think a lot of people really think hard about getting into the pit and, and coming out in one piece these days. In times gone by when the punk scene was relatively small and life of music would always be played in small pubs, often with a fair bit of word of mouth involved so there wouldn't often be huge crowds turning up. So a reasonable sized crowd in a smallish pub would often work very well as a dance, it's the whole moshing slamming thing. Most people actually know each other, at least by sight, if not personally, and there'll be an understanding of how each person likes to jump around, and a smaller group it's just easier for everyone to keep an eye on each other and just keep moving around and around. Yeah, it seemed to me that moshing came out of that first punk rock pogoing thing where people were pushed together in a crowd and there was nowhere to go apart from up and down. I guess most people just saw the early stuff that came out of uh, England, you know, uh, when they, you know, depending on what age you were at that time. I was about 12 or 13 when, when uh, um, pretty vacant sort of stuff was being shown and everyone's showing punk rock on the ABC reporting on it. You saw these people smashing into one another and that became the vogue for a while in a very small, you know, clique group. I mean, the original moshing, if you like, was actually more of the slam dancing when the punk era started, and then we saw crowd surfing, and then we saw, you know, stage diving come back in, and of course it was brought to a height around the Nirvana type era. It seems to me that since the beginning of this decade, there's been a massive convergence between mainstream and alternative. Since I think major record companies have seen the market value in things alternative which have happened since the rise of um, alternative music, probably spearheaded in mainstream culture by bands like Nirvana, becoming massive. Nirvana's popularity, which went beyond the boundaries of what was previously the alternative music scene, um, meant that a whole lot of people were now engaged in moshing as an activity without really understanding what it was about. It was that that video um, for Smells Like Teen Spirit in the, in the high school gymnasium with the whole crowd erupting and the, and the uh, cheerleaders and so on that sort of did it and set up almost the rules of conduct or the rules of be behaviour, you know, stir your crowd into a frenzy and then they will erupt into this, uh, here we go, mosh pit I suppose. I mean that pretty much did it, that was, that was one of the, the big defining moments. As things have gone along and people have seen Pearl Jam videos and all the other stuff that's come since, the, um, and, uh, and learnt from things like music videos in particular, they've missed out on the actual, the spirit of the idea, the actual reasoning for it. I mean recently at the big day out one of the, the interesting things was to see Regurgitate applying all of their um, techno stuff and yet there was like 300 blokes in wraparound black sunnies with tats and black t-shirts moshing. I mean, to me, I looked at that and said, well, this is crazy. Like, it's not the music you mosh to anyway. 
Well, the big day out was something that grew out of you know, the, the rise of alternative music. The first, very first one was um, Nirvana played it when they first toured Australia. And a lot of the, the alternative rock thing as, a, as such grew from the grunge movement that began with bands like Nirvana and Soundgarden. The first big day out in Adelaide was actually the year after Big Day Out started. It was held at Adelaide Uni on the grounds down by the River Torrens there. And I think there are a touch over 10,000 people. When the Big Day Out moved from Adelaide University to Wayville Showground, it probably lost a little bit of something in terms of atmosphere because Adelaide Uni was a great location. But it was constrained as to how many people could get, could get there. And, you know, as audience numbers grew, um, it had to move location. I guess it's as simple as that. That was the first time I got scared in the mosh because I was down the front for the Ramones and I was used to seeing them in gigs where there were, you know, 500 to 1,000 people and I don't know how many people were in that hangar on that day, but it was packed and as soon as they started, the crowd surged forward and it went sideways and there was, I had no control. I knew that I was, uh, it felt really scary to me. The obvious difference between small shows and big shows is um, the intimacy. A small show allows for everybody to participate. There's a certain responsibility because even if you're at the back, you feel very much a part of it. You bring it down to the lowest common denominator on a large show, and that's the major problem. Craig Bradshaw, 3D Radio, Psycho Green, from their at-home Moana CD. The song called Moana, made about all about a little beach down at South. And joining us at this time is Mark from Ocean Graphics. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Craig. How are you going? Yeah, good, mate. That's good, and a uh, nice day, 28 degrees. Is it going to be nice for a bit of a surf today, or what? Yeah, a beautiful beach day. Conditions should be nice and clean and glassy. Virtually no wind for later today. Down south, um, swell is looking quite safe. I think the beach lifestyle, the, the sort of laid back, uh, sort of lifestyle, but when you surf or skate, you usually, you generally go hard. And I think that, that leads itself to a whole scene of people who get into the, heavy, the hard music. scene is characterised by fast, I would say aggressive, but that's not true, furious, um, exciting guitar-based music. The thing that makes me sad is you 